Well, good morning and welcome to Cup of Faith on this Wednesday, December the 22nd. And I have some good news for you off the, off the start. And that is yesterday was the longest day of the year or the, or the, the day with the least sunlight. So now today the days start to get longer again incrementally but i promise you we are on our way towards spring so uh, you, you may not you may or may not be ready to hear that when we haven't had christmas yet but for me i'm just i'm i'm an optimist and uh i've heard that the lakes are already frozen and people are ice fishing and i'm waiting for them to thaw so i can get my sailboat back out on the water again for a few minutes oh and before i forget uh, i I do want to remind you that we are, um, our Christmas Eve candlelight service is on Friday. This Friday, there are four service times available. Please check our website or our Facebook page and please come. I, I don't want to get too far down this road, but I, I know that when we have had such a prolonged season of COVID and our church has worked so hard to have online services and, and online opportunities like Cup of Faith on Facebook. Uh, there is a temptation to become more and more comfortable to decide, well, this is my church, and just watching what's what's online. But I was reading in Hebrews this week, and and the the um, the caution is 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 not to to forget about getting together because getting when we get together we encourage one another and we are a public witness of the presence of Christ in our community and that doesn't happen in the same degree when we say I'm not going to do this anymore I'm just going to stay home so I the everybody's been putting a lot of work into the Christmas Eve service and uh, I'm going to be there I keep trying to talk Pastor Jeremy into letting me play the pan, the tambourine um but so far, no go, so uh, you never know. Let, let's come on Christmas Eve and find out for sure if he relented or not. Uh, good morning to those that have already said good morning to me. I, as you know, I, I will send you a little message um, after, probably after I get back from the gym today. Um, I'm still not trying to bulk up for the winter. I'm trying to lose a few pounds, uh, still uh, recovering from the steroid treatments that I'd had and uh, about 10 pounds overweight, but... I, I can see some progress. I wanted to talk to you for a few moments about um, about peace because this is one of the great uh, promises that God gave us in the announcement of Christ's birth. But when we talk about peace, what are we talking about? What are we referring to? Well, let me give you a couple of contrasts that helps identify what, what peace is because in one sense, it's an inner feeling. It's an intangible feeling in other words, it's, it's, it's not. And in one sense, peace is the absence of conflict, whether it's external or relational conflict. And I know Christmas can be a very uh, difficult time for families if they've been in conflict, and there's no doubt about it. The, the last few years of, of COVID have brought a lot of conflict and division in families. Uh, we're grateful that that's not been the case in our home and our family, even though we've taken different positions on different things. Uh, somehow we have learned to either navigate or avoid those topics. And I think we're still a very intact, healthy, loving family. But peace is the absence of conflict. Another thing peace is, is peace is the absence of agitation. Now that we can relate to as well, because that's when we refer to what is internal or the emotional part of us. There is, and, and how do we know whether we have peace or not? Well, uh, interestingly, I, I came across an article, I'd heard about it, so I, I, I searched it, that, um, and, and there's a couple things. The, the Guardian, uh, which is a British publication, came out with something a few years ago, and it found that a third of people say they use strong language now more than they did five years ago. And then another from the Wall Street Journal that just came out a couple of days ago, it says people are swearing more and they are doing so for two, one of the two leading reasons is the prolonged 
COVID season we have been in and what it has done to rights and to liberties and to freedoms and just normal life and 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 people a lot of people have reached a boiling point and and uh, and I get that and uh, and I get the exasperation I understand it all but the other reason interestingly is zoom meetings now with zoom meetings pardon me I'm going to get something out of my eye with Zoom meetings, we, we just started to get become more and more familiar with each other and we've lost a sense of professionalism and, and, and I know that I'm not quite the same person on a Zoom meeting. I, I probably a little agitated, a little less peace. I'm not saying that I swear on Zoom meetings, but I am saying that uh, they're not my favorite way of communicating. I know they're better than nothing, but I always prefer face-to-face, voice-to-voice, in person. So suffice it to say, there's an over, I, I think that when swearing is increasing, and I'm not really picking on swearing, I just, it, it's a symptom to me, and to me it's a symptom of an overall absence of peace. That we're no longer living in peace. Obviously we're not living in peaceful times, and we are not living in peace, and, and the scriptures tell us it is under the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. So if we are not sure where we're at with peace, one of the things to do is evaluate our conversations. So unlike the idyllic Norman Rockwell pictures, and I don't know if you're, if you're familiar with them, I used to love them as a child and, and just what, you know, how, how joyous and glorious Christmas was, or as Pastor Jeremy talked about the Charlie Brown Christmas. Um, Christmas, is not so much like that for a lot of us. Christmas is a conflicted season. It's busy, it's expensive, there's expectations, we put anxiety and pressure on ourselves to go out and find the gifts for the people that we love or even people we don't, that we barely know, but there's an expectation. Um, there is overeating, there is conflict, there is grief as we recognize our first losses, there is celebration. There's loss of, uh, there's loss and there's loss of family. And if there's anything that we need in this season, not only to survive it, but to enjoy it, it's inner peace or peace of mind. So how is inner peace, how, how's it gonna help us? How is it gonna change us? Well, I, in a little bit of research I did, I, I found one article that said inner peace sharpens the five senses. It calms us down, it calms down the mind and the emotions, and it enables us, it enables you to focus, to evaluate, and address our situations. So when we have it, we are better prepared to handle life. Not just to endure life, but to handle it. And in part of this article, they came across 11 benefits of inner peace. And if you would like to have these, all 11, yes, just tell me in the comments that you'd like it and I'll private message you with them. But here, let me go through them quickly. First of all, inner peace gives us better concentration ability. Secondly, efficiency in handling your daily affairs of life. Third, a sense of inner strength and power. Four, more patience, tolerance, and tact. I know I don't have inner peace when I'm not patient and, or tolerant or have tact. Number five, it, is, it gives us freedom from stress, anxiety, and worries. Number six, it gives us a sense of inner happiness and bliss. Number seven, it makes, excuse me, a little bit of coughing. I should tell you, my wife mentioned this last week, is I have a small winter asthma cough. And that's all it is, and I've had it for years, but it, it is what it is, and it's genetic, and my boys have it, but uh, pardon me. Number seven was, it makes falling asleep easy at night and sleeping soundly. Number eight, when your mind is at peace, you are not affected by what people think or say about you. Wouldn't that be great not to be bothered by that? Number nine, it's a peaceful and, a peaceful and tranquil mind is free from restless thinking and running from one unimportant thought to another. Remember what the scriptures say about a double-minded man is unstable in all of their ways? I suspect peace has a part of that. Number 10, with a peaceful mind, you stop being swayed and agitated 
by events, problems, or difficulties. And number 11, a tranquil mind helps you maintain a state of inner poise and clear judgment in all situations. So inner peace is important and we need it. And I think that there are three areas of peace for us. There is peace about ourselves or peace within ourselves. There is peace about life, about situations, about uh, conflicts. And lastly, there is peace about God. And I'll come back to that one in a moment. How do we get peace? Well, from Isaiah chapter 26, it says, You will keep in perfect peace all those who trust in you, all those whose thoughts are fixed upon you. So, if I can say it this way, the path to perfect peace is trusting God and, uh, and a fixation of our thoughts on Him. Um, last night, I, I uh, ran to McDonald's. Well, I, I drove, but I got Brenda something to eat, a late night meal, and, uh, but I didn't get anything for myself. And even when the girl at, at the microphone said, would you like a hot apple pie? And I love those things. And uh, but but I didn't because I'm on this thing to to get to to lose some weight. And Brenda said when I got home, said, "Boy, you're sure disciplined." And I said, "I don't know if I'm disciplined as much as I'm obsessed." And there's there is a difference. There's a little you know little check mark for each of us. Are we disciplined or are we obsessed about things? And mine is is to get back to my original weight. But when it comes to inner peace, we need this focus. Of our thoughts on God. So another thing uh, about how this path of inner peace is found in Philippians chapter 4, and maybe you're familiar with it. It begins in verse 6. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything and tell God your needs and thank him for all he has done. And a part of our path to peace and going forward is the recollection of what God has done for us in the past. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard our hearts and our minds as we live in Jesus Christ. That's from Philippians chapter 4. So is it fair to say that peace begins in the mind as we focus our, our thoughts and we recall God's goodness and then he will he will just how do I say it arbitrarily unilaterally give us peace so lastly the most important aspect of peace and that is that when God gave us Jesus, he did so to build this bridge between us and him. Because probably from our perspective, we, we were at odds with God. Perhaps we had ambiguity towards God. Perhaps we had apathy disengaged, disinterested. That was not on God's part. Because God has longed and searched for us. He has craved for us. His thoughts are about us. But there was a chasm. And when the angels came and they announced that, that there would be peace on earth and goodwill towards men in whom he finds favor from Luke chapter 2, the purpose of Christ's coming, the purpose of Christmas, was to build the bridge between us and God so that there would not be conflict, but that there would be peace. That is the basis of all peace, is what God has given us in his son Jesus. So our relationship could be restored, reestablished, established, whatever your state is. But it's a wonderful gift. So this Christmas, I say, my friends, Merry Christmas. Cheers to you. Enjoy your cup of faith and know that we love you, we think of you, and we pray for you. And may you enjoy this season with your friends and family 
And may God's peace guard your heart and your mind as you either go through a season of conflict or of loss, high expectations, unmet expectations, whatever it is. May God's peace guard your heart and mind through your son, Jesus. Amen.